Good morning, Finley friends. Amber here. Yesterday's day started off with a little brisk walk, actually a sprint to this bus station. Um, I wanted to rope drop to get early park hours and ended up waiting for almost an hour and a half for my bus. So totally missed that. And it turned out to backfire on me. And I ended up having to chug the coffee and I forgot to put a lid on it. So Anyways, needless to say, I started out a little earlier, put a lid on my coffee this morning. Today is my final park day. I am heading to Magic Kingdom. I did not start the week off there, but I will be ending my week off there. Um, I did go ahead and purchase the Genie Plus just to see whether or not it made sense. And we'll see whether or not um, the idea of Genie Plus at this point really isn't really that I'm not sure if I really agree with the Genie Plus or the whole thing or just park drop or rope drop early park hours is the ticket. I'm going to go there and head over to Adventureland. That is my favorite part of um, Magic Kingdom. So that's where I'll start. Head to the left. I think instinctively everybody wants to head to the castle and then move to turn either go straight to, to Seven Dwarfs. But I'm going to go the opposite way and head over to Splash Mountain. That is my favorite ride here at this park. So we'll see if I can get on there, but my first fast pass is for Peter Pan, not until two o'clock. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that and try and see if I can fiddle faddle with the, uh, or kind of mess around with the Genie Plus and see if I can get an earlier time. Cause I can't book another time until two hours after the park opens. And then if I wait until I tap into Peter Pan, it's going to be after mid-afternoon, which I don't want to be there. And I so I'm going to try and play around with this. So but anyways, this hang tight for a beautiful day. When I found it was as empty as could be And now I'm staring at my face above a bathroom sink Saying I want to be It's where I am now It's the only thing that I've found there are other places, there are a million pretty faces. I want to be where I am. I am at Magic Kingdom for my final day. Walking through that tunnel. They put the train station in front so that you didn't see the castle from the staging area, they call it, the before the big show. So the, the tunnel kind of acts like the curtain before you come through. It really does give you that sense of entrance. <laughs> but I'm going to take you along today for a lot of the things that I learned from my Keys to the Kingdom tour today. So. Hopefully you learned some things. I did. But check this out. This is early park hours and my favorite street in the entire world. Oh my gosh. Main Street USA. Here we are. Celebrating 50 years. What a way to do it.
So this is early park hours, and I'm going to assume that every single person in this ride is heading to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. All right, well, I just checked the, the forecast for today, and it turns out that it's going to rain, and I forgot my rain jacket. So anyways, this is the first successful rope drop that I've gotten to, and I... I'm sitting here at the Chestnut Cafe, and it's one of those things where I didn't realize that Rope Drop only allowed you into Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. Adventureland, which is my favorite, is not open for early park hours, so I'll have to wait till 9 o'clock to get to those items. Being able to get onto the Seven Dwarfs with this lineup, hopefully it won't be too bad. So I do highly recommend, if you can, to rope drop the seven dwarfs. I do hi I do highly recommend dropping seven dwarfs if you can. It's been pretty steady flow. Alright, that was a lot of fun. That was a great way to start the day. Now I'm going to go to Winnie the Pooh, if it's not too bad. I have to ride this one in honor of Ashley, but... Oh, it's not so bad. It's only a 15 minute wait, it says. So that will be the lowest wait time all day, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Weird about filming. <laughs> I've always felt weird about filming when people are watching. I can't do this YouTubing thing very well. But anyways, what do you do? Oh, 
went to swing. Phew, I almost bounced right out of the ride. <laughs> Watch out for the fall up in the world. Get the honey. Stolen honey. Oh no, we're This cupcake is celebrating Women's History Month and specifically Mary Blair who helped participate in the creation of It's a Small World. All right, so this is a blue confetti lemon, I believe lemon, and it's filled with confetti, as you can see, coming out of the bottom. And it's got this little chocolate medallion, which I will save for later. Let's tell you what this tastes like. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, the icing is very lemony. It's very tasty. I think it's worth it. I think a fork is required. <laughs> it just fell apart. Oh, that's funny. Oh well. Mm -hmm. It's a very moist cake. It's very tasty. This icing is yellow, is lemon. I don't know how long they're going to have it here, if it's just for Women's History Month, but it's a tasty treat. I'm going to enjoy this with my coffee. When I did the Keys to the Kingdom tour the other day, I ended up going, entering through the Utilidor, through the, there's a, an entry door right between um, Winnie the Pooh and Friars Nook, so that was kind of a little secret spot, and that's where we started our tour in the underground tunnel that actually turns out to be above ground. So Walt Disney World is actually built on a second story. So the first story is the utilidor um, and all of the underground stuff. So it's kind of neat. Everything that you need to gain access to is a tunnel, system, tunnel system, if you will. Um, every access at every point. So we, we entered here by the Winnie the Pooh and we ended up coming out by the town hall. So it was really neat. Heading to It's a Small World. So if you still want to be irritated, <laughs> I suggest you fast forward for the next 30 seconds or so. But before I go in there, I wanted to kind of make mention. I just um, heard a, a family complaining about, well, not necessarily complaining, but trying to find their stroller after they had parked it. So 
one of the things that I realized very early on, if you park your stroller in an undesignated stroller parking spot, they will move it on you. So I would recommend putting some sort of a balloon or some sort of an identifying marker on your stroller so that you can easily identify it because a lot of times it was not where I thought it was or parked it. So let's do It's a Small World. 15 minutes to drink and this coffee is hot and strong. Oh, I don't like guzzling and coffee, but I am not wasting this, so cheers. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sorry in advance, but it would not be a trip to Disney if I did not ride It's a Small World. One of the rides that you get to ride when you do the Kings to the Kingdom is the Haunted Mansion. And they're very good at giving you some of the little insider tips and tricks, but I won't, sh I won't share those with you. Um, but this is kind of its own little store. But again, look up. So all these little candles. There she is, Madame Leota. If you listen very carefully when that seance is happening in the ride, it's the voice of Maleficent. a cuter version of hitchhiking ghosts hitchhiking ghosts <laughs> with our love we built these house it's 10 a.m. and this is the crowd so I think rope chalk worked for about an hour the rest of it is going to be busy I'm going to take the Liberty Bell if it's running it's a cute tour. I always enjoy taking things that kind of like, you know, filler rides. Not into the high ticket -y attraction stuff. Um, just not interested in standing in these lines. And the rides, while well, they're great, are awesome. Like, I really enjoy them, but I'm not really interested in standing still for an hour or two to ride. A ride. It's just not okay. I'm not cool. I would much rather do this. No, it's like 10. Excuse me. This is kind of more my speed, and I kind of think I am. I'm committing to my age right now, but. I don't know if it's because we've enjoyed Disney and we've been fortunate enough to have enjoyed it a few times. I think one of the big um, mistakes that families make it was trying to fit in everything in one trip and trying to fit everything in um, in one day. It just isn't possible. And I'll tell you that when you spend two hours in a lineup to ride a ride and you can miss out on so many other things that are around Standing in the ride or the lineups for the rides, um, if you can try to avoid them. I even purchased the Genie Plus, which uh, which I'll, I'll continue to use and try to figure it out. Um, I still haven't. There's an art to that, and I know that when you figure it out, and if there's a insider's way, there's lots of videos out there that you can watch if you are interested in coming and trying to avoid the lines. Um, but I just don't think you can. Oh, I gotta show you this. Look at this, guys. So one thing I don't like about my camera, I can't flip you around quickly, I gotta stop and start it. But I don't know if you can see over here, this is the Country Bear Jamboree, one of our family favorites as well. We love this. And look on the top here, can you see if I can zoom right in on him? There's the bear up on the top waving to all of the guests. Country 
Country Fair Jamboree. We'll stop in there before the day is through, guys. But first, I'm gonna take the Liberty Bell around and show you around this part of the island. This was actually something that took us a few trips before we actually even discovered it. Um, so that has kind of been the lesson in this. We are still, like even this trip, even at Animal Kingdom, I'm still discovering new things. Like even at Animal Kingdom the other day, to ride the train up to, um, what do you think of the earrings I got yesterday at Animal Kingdom? These are the earrings that I bought from that artist that was hand painting those earrings. They're so cute. And you know what? They're on a post, a nylon post, because I have an allergy to metal and I can't wear anything that's made of nickel or anything like that. So she assured me I would be fine with these earrings and I've had them in all morning and I haven't had an issue at all. So yeah, it's awesome. But anyways, this queue behind me, what I was talking about is navigating uh, Walt Disney World, Magic Kingdom in particular, on a really hot, busy day. What are my tricks, tips and tricks? Doing things like this, like this is here, like look at it. There's not a single person waiting. This is the Liberty Bell. And yes, I know it can be boring and not many people want to ride it, but this is where you see the, the, the history of Disney and you get to see a lot of the, like the river boats. It's a, it's a 20 minute ride. It's really cool. And it took me actually a couple of years and a couple of visits of, of coming here to actually enjoy this. I didn't even realize it was a tour around the bay. And then you go over to, to Tom Sawyer's Island. Um, I'm not sure if that boat is running or not, but if it is, I'll take you over there. That was one of Eli's favorite things to do. Um, and there's not hardly anybody there. So you can beat the crowds and you can get out of the heat. Um, try to use the Genie Plus as much as you can and try to be able to get those lightning wings as much as you can. And you can have a full magical day without having to spend two and three hours in lineups. Just not my way of enjoying a day. I'm just admiring these duckies playing around in the pond here. We used to see, um, there was a resident alligator that was in this little river, but I'm not sure if they've relocated him. I think they might have. But you would often see him sunbathing over there. I'm going to show you on that little grassy knoll. And behind me here on this other spot over there, you would see him often. But I have a feeling that they've relocated him or her. But Tell me how cute that house is over there. Wouldn't you just want to live in that? Like, that's just so cute and charming. Like, especially with that massive big front porch overlooking the water. Just like that, the way it sits. <laughs> with the nice pergola and the nice gazebo there. Oh my gosh. I could totally live in that. It's very southern. I love it. Around the corner here. Here comes little Miss Liberty Bell. If you've never ridden this at Magic Kingdom, I highly encourage it. It's really cool. Oh, coming in. Coming in hot. <laughs> These cadets are playing around in here. It's actually quite fun to watch. Here she comes in all her glory. Look at that majestic beast. Captain. Welcome aboard the Liberty Bell. I'm your captain. Country Bear Jamboree is an on-stage show of the animatronic bears. It's actually pretty cool. You do see Tom Sawyer's boat there. So hopefully they're actually doing 
trips to Tom Sawyer's Island, but oh, there's a good one. See that peak just beyond the outskirts of Frontierland? That's Chickapin Hill, or at least it used to be. Down for a few years back, and folks been calling it Splash Mountain ever since. Some have even taken the ride and hauled out logs over the big fall. Seems far-fetched, I know, but it's the truth. All my life, it seems I never could tell a lie to anybody with doubt, nor a truth to anybody with belief. But believe me when I tell you, truth is the most valuable thing we have. So I make sure I only use it with the economy when I was young. This is the drop-off point for the island. And it's just a... Uh, member walking around so maybe it is open maybe it's just not open right now but it's just a little walkabout there's over some suspension bridges there's a little cannon point where you can go in and play and again we only discovered that when Eli was little one of those things that you just kind of do to get out of the heat because it's all shaded in there too. It's lovely. Cinderella's Castle. So I learned in the Keys to the Kingdom tour that there is actually a suite in that castle and it is a royal suite and it's gorgeous show for dignitary special guests and um, they used to do this thing years ago and I believe it was in 2007 and 2008 I can't remember the exact year but we were here actually during it it was called the year of a million dreams and what that was was um, Disney decided that they were going to make the dreams of a million of their guests come true so it could, it could consist of anything from a full day vacation, a, a night in that room was one of the, um, the gifts and it was by total random selection. Um, so the cast member would get their envelope in the morning and they would have to go to their rendezvous point. Like for example, like it could be, um, let's say it was the boat to the Grand Floridian and the cast member would have to go to that specific boat and if they were in say like they were in row two seat two and that person would be the recipient of the prize in their envelope and they would not know what the prize was until they got there so if there was nobody sitting in that spot then the prize got forfeited they didn't put it back into the kitty so like they gave things like ears and you know dinners and lots of different things they gave away a million prizes so it was really neat um, one of those prizes was a night in the cinderella castle so in the utilidor there is an elevator that you take right up to the, the suite and once you're in the suite you're in the suite you cannot leave um so there's no roaming the park at night like there's a it's it's staffed and guarded so um unfortunately <laughs> there is no way of exiting once you were in you're in for the night but the bathtub is spectacular they showed pictures and of course it was in an area where we were not allowed to take pictures but I don't even know they might be surfacing around but I'm not gonna go searching for them but according like when when we looked at the pictures that they have down in the utilidor it was absolutely amazing it is a very regal royal suite this is the thing like when you're on this boat it's not just a it's almost like the jungle cruise like at a massive level and there's never a wait. Okay, fine, you don't have somebody doing jokes and stuff, but it's really so cool. It's a cool experience. Anyways, one of the keys was the show. So it's all about, you know, like I said, when we first came into the park, there was the train station placed strategically there and the town hall. The town hall is one of the only buildings in all of Main Street that is actual to scale, size to scale. Um, 
eliminate the view of the contemporary. We're passing cut crew corner. Attention deck crew, stay alert. If there's river pirates out here, this is where they'll most likely be. I can hear them from here. Uh, from all the commotion, it sounds like their interests lie elsewhere. <laughs> They're in there having a party. You hear them? Got their laundry line. <laughs> oh, Another little Oh, is that an elderberry you tree? I think that is an elderberry tree. Then the settlers started heading west. The army came Look at all those beautiful seeds. My feeling is these days those little there's fruits. a lot less frontier and a lot more civilization than was truly necessary. I think that's what that was. If you see, if you can look carefully at the top of the Cinderella's castle, I don't know if I can zoom in enough here for you to see this, but there is a rope or a, a guide line at the tip of the tower there that goes all the way down into a catch area. And that is the cord that Tinkerbell uses in the fireworks show. And Tinkerbell's um, suit is totally lit up, nice magical green. So when she is, um, she's actually lit up like a little Christmas tree. And when she um, she takes that same elevator that you access in the Utilidor and you go all the way up to the top to the, the suites, then she has to climb another flight of stairs. And all the while she has two attendants with her and um, they get her all the way to the very tip of that tower and she ends, she has to climb up a small little shaft right to the very top to her guidelines where she's secured and um, again, she's got two, two guides with her and they literally just shove her off. She's got to be extremely athletic because if she misses her mark and she doesn't give herself enough ump or the guides don't give her enough ump, she will not make it all the way. And what she does is she drops her lights and then she has to hand over hand over hand hurry across the finish line <laughs> and if she if she does come up short she has a, a pack in her back that has a rope that she can throw down to her to her helpers and they will bring her to the to the end um, of her finish line there but if she does come in a little too hot they do have a net for her to go into it's actually was a neat little story so um, it is kind of like a zip line, if you will, and she just does it so magically and makes you look like she's flying through the air. So, anyway. brings back some serious memories. This is the Crystal Palace. And when we came here, when Lucas was two, he decided that he wanted to venture away from our group, which he often did. <laughs> he did not stay in his stroller. He always wanted to be exploring. And he ended up coming over here to play with the duckies and I want to think like back then I'm not even sure how he got access to it I can't imagine that these weren't here um, but he was over here on the grass playing with the ducks we were freaking out our entire party was looking for him the cast members were looking for him and a lady came up and said are you looking for a little blonde boy He's over there playing with the duckies. Yeah. Anyways, that is one of our favorite restaurants too, was the Crystal Palace. Ashley is a huge fan of Eeyore, but um, 
they did away with the buffet. Most of the buffets are, are not no longer um, just due to COVID and just restrictions and changes. So, you guys, I haven't seen crowds like this since Christmas. We came at, we came here at Christmas a few years back, and those were some serious crowds, but. This is just as bad, and it's hot. So as much as I love this place, I do not love the crowds, so I am heading over to the fort. Our first love <laughs> of Disney. That was where we started staying as a family, and we love it there, so I'm gonna take you over there for a little visit, but I wanna try and see if I can get some brunch Maybe I'll hit the contemporary. It is walking distance from here. Um, actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna have a better option of with food there because if I can't get into the Polynesian, they have a character breakfast. Um, so it's a pretty popular spot. Um, I do love it, but I think I'm gonna have more luck. Oh, the Dapper Dan's are up. I'm gonna have more luck at the contemporary to get something to eat. So I think that's where we'll head. Not before we watch the dappers. So everybody have a great day. Bye folks. Go get lines. Look at that. Walked up right as they were singing their final note. <laughs> well, I could walk to the contemporary because it is walkable, but I want to go on the monorail and I haven't been on that all week and that's one of the boys favorite things to do. Right there is the boat launch for the four. I am under my poncho. It has been a glorious week. I have had the best weather. And then Today is my final day, five minutes before the fireworks. This is what we're dealing with. Oh my God, it is a, it is a nightmare. There's thunder in the air. I'm gonna assume the fireworks are canceled, but everybody is running for the exits. So, the park is open till midnight, so I don't know if like I wait this storm out or if it's going to be here all night, but there sure as heck won't be very many crowds, so I'm hoping we'll have walk-on rides. Am I nuts? I haven't done Pirates, I haven't done Splash Mountain, I, I haven't even done the Country Bear Jamboree. Oh, I just, I didn't even get Adventureland done. It was so hot, I left today. <laughs> I just got back here to do the fireworks and do evening hours. Oh, well. Sometimes even the best laid plans fail. I think, I think I got my camera protected here <laughs> under the poncho. But I am walking down Main Street, <laughs> USA in a very different way than I started the day. Everybody is coming out, but I am going to, I was doing this before, coming against traffic. I'm going in now. Oh, this is so crazy. Look at this water here, guys. <laughs> People have resorted to bare feet. Dancing in the rain. Oh, I just got a soaker. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. So I just got the official word that the fireworks have not been canceled. They have just been postponed for the time being. There was a little lightning in the air, but I think the worst of it is behind us. Everybody has decided to depart. And the steady streams of people flowing out is a good sign. But I don't want to get too far away from Main Street because I want to see the fireworks! Oh, 
<laughs> oh, the kiddos are not liking this. These will be magical pictures. <laughs> Oh, I think somebody got engaged, Lukey. Oh. The rain looks like it may have stopped, but the lightning has not. So I'm going to go hit a few rides. I don't know if the rides shut down. I know Splash Mountain and Big Thunder run well, but I do believe that pirates will go. So all the people that were standing in those lines will likely run over to pirates. So let's go see. Once again, this presentation of Disney Enchantment has been delayed. Thank you. Well, delayed is better than canceled. picked a good week to come all week it's supposed to rain oh, the poor people that chose this week to come to Florida and seven years ago our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal now we are engaged in a great civil war Testing whether that nation or any the office entrusted to each president by us, we the people. Therein lies the genius of that new idea, now over 200 years old. A new idea our presidents have turned into a great American idea again and again. bad now again. <laughs> oh my gosh, I better put my camera away. Well, the Pirates is a little quiet, eh? <laughs> this is kind of funny, but perfect way to end the evening on the boys' favorite ride. What is happening? Like a whole boat to myself. I was thrilled to get a row. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> this one's for you, boys. That was a beautiful week. Here. I don't know if it'll show up. I'm interested to see whether it'll show up on camera or not. But you'll hear it. spectacular finish to a wonderful trip. I feel like I have a front row seat and I'm a guest of honor because there's hardly anybody here and this is how I love Disney. 
I remember when the kids were very little, we had an evening like this and they jumped and they laughed and they played in the puddles. It was one of our, my favorite memories. So there was a lot of kids jumping in the puddles and having fun. There was a few scared because of the thunder and lightning earlier, but once that broke away, we had a beautiful evening. Still raining, but okay, nothing a poncho can't cure. It's not very often you get this kind of a front row view with hardly anybody in it. Goodbye, castle, for another fabulous vacation. You are beautiful. There's a part of me that just doesn't want to leave. I have figured out you find peace where you make it. Scenery won't change it. I wasted so much time thinking I could ever find enough of anything that would bring. So I found peace with who I am now It's the only me I'll ever be I found There are other places There are a million other faces I found